single factor model. Single metaphor, single factor model is saying that uh, return of every single stock is proportional to a single factor F. What distinguishes one stock from the other is its sensitivity to the factor beta. So each stock has its own beta and it's called beta i for stock i. And also they differ from uh, its constant term of i. So if you don't use expected return, then the formula will be say as uh, rit, the stock of i at time t, be equal to a constant i, and look at, look at the constant i don't have the subscript t, so it's constant over time. And plus another term, which is uh, the term that determined by factor, the beta i ft, you look at uh, the factor is don't have subscript i because this factor is common across every single stock and plus a uh, random term. The random term is uh, depend on i and t though. So each single stock at different time will have its own uh, random term. So what is the factor here? So in the Sharp's uh, single factor model, Kepler model. Okay. Um, the factor is the market excess return, so it's uh, Rm minus Rf. And to predict, it's not the stock return, but the uh, stock excess return. So how you estimate beta is by looking at data of each in the for stock i. You take its excess return over time and regress on its uh, market return time series, do this regression, you can estimate beta i. And since this is a simple linear regression, beta i can also be found by covariance over variance formula. So it's a fraction. The denominator is the variance of a market excess return. The numerator is covariance of stock i excess return with the market excess return. And since uh, risk-free return is not a, not a stochastic, so basically we can have covariance of the stock return over the market return as numerator and denominator is variance of market return. So now we can estimate beta, this uh, sanitary parameter, but does it really satisfy uh, what we observe in the real world. So people have to look at empirically how the stock return change with beta i with the sanity parameter. How did they do it? First, as we said, uh, for each single stock, they estimate beta by doing the uh, time series regression. Look at the stock excess return regress on the market excess return, which give alpha and beta i, then what you're going to do is to look at the average success return. So for each stock, okay, you calculate excess return and average over time. Okay? And then for each stock, you have average success return and you try to regress uh, the uh, Excess return for each stock over every alpha i and beta i estimated for, for a first step and to see how it looks like. And what it looks like is what we call the security market like the beta, the lambda. And indeed, when you try to plot them, so look at the plot, the x axis is the beta, uh, the y axis is the market excess return. You try to plot them in a the scatter plot. You notice that it's very much a positive relationship. You can see uh, the lambda is positive. What does that mean? It means that if you really want a higher excess return, which is high in the y-axis, you need to have higher beta. So that actually helps the risk return trade-off, which means if you want a higher uh, 
excess return for your stock, you need to have higher beta. And higher beta means that you are likely to have high return or you also have likely have low return. In other words, if you want to earn more, you must prepare to lose more. So the scatter pot looks pretty nice. Indeed, it's very surprising. Uh, CapM do explain a lot of variation in stock return. And the data is so explains 70%. But of course, you may ask, okay, what are the 30% there? But 70% is actually pretty impressive. So that's why uh, CAPM is something we mentioned a lot of time. So we have a lot of anomaly that we can explain in the CAPM. The first is uh, in XT5, people discover long-term reversals. What does that mean? It means that if the stock have been doing badly in the past, it tend to do well the next year or conversely if it's been do pretty good in the past uh it will do badly uh next round and the next anomaly is a little bit somewhat sim somewhat opposite but it's much shorter term what it said is if a recent past okay have been doing good it tend to continue to do good if recent past continue to do badly, and you you continue to do badly, so this uh, short term return continues a little bit different from the reverse of long term because long term is much longer. So here we have a uh, treatment is a much shorter one. So there are many other anomaly besides the both two we mentioned. Um, is saying that okay, taking beta into account. You still find some stocks is short return is related to the size of the firm, the book to market equity, earning to price ratio, cash flow to price, past sales growth. Why is this surprising? Because you should expect this would be captured in beta, but it didn't. 